Hello, 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 and welcome to the Bet With Us MLS Betting Hits Preview Show. I'm your host, Garrett, a.k.a. Just Some Footy. My co-host here, Cooper, a.k.a. Sports Profit. Please, if you like this content, right there below, hit the heart, subscribe, um, turn the hit the bell so you get the notifications. And if you're feeling up for it, join the community and get some exclusive picks. Um, I love their picks over there. They're great. Uh, you can bet on MLS at BetUS with promo code BETWITHUS. That's promo code BETWITHUS. And get 125% uh, deposit bonus up to $2,500. Um, so with that out of the way, Cooper, let's get into this, man. I got a storm coming. You might hear the rain whipping against my windows. Uh, All right. So the USA is about to kick off. So we got things to do. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get it going, man. All right. I'm going to jump right in. And I'm going to start with my first play. And I'm back in my favorite team in the preseason. And now and it's Atlanta United. I'm doing draw no bet. They're giving me plus 140, so I'm going to take that price against D.C. United in D.C. Um, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Atlanta's season has started off slow, and it's kind of interesting to say that considering they're 2-1-1 one, and one in their record and sitting sixth in their conference. Um, so it's not, it's not a terrible start. It's just slow for where we imagine this team being. Uh, but they haven't had a, their strongest 11 out on the field yet. Injuries have kind of... Uh, limited their uh, effectiveness, so to speak. And that shows in the ratings where they're, they've had one road game. They had an uh, expected goal total of 1.15 there. Their expected goal total through the first four games of the season is only 1.33. I think that's low for the talent this team will have once everyone's healthy. Um, and that defense is struggling. Their expected goals against is a staggering 1.95 through four games. It's, it's rough. Great. It's rough, but I, I, I'm backing them here at this price because I just don't think D.C. United is a good team. I'm, I'm still on that bandwagon. Um, I might be the only one, but I'm there. Uh, D.C.'s expected goal total win at home in two games has been 1.5. That's decent. Uh, it's 1.45 through the, through the first four games, so it's pretty consistent there. Their expected goals against is a right about the same. 1.45 at home, 1.67 through the first four games of the season. Um, what gets me here is that Atlanta, even with the injuries, even with – at times it's it's literally only Martinez out there. Yeah. Um, they are still middle of the pack and big chances created and those conversions. D.C. United is in the bottom half of big chances created. Uh, I think we saw it in week one. I think we saw it in um, some other games because – they're. DC United just gets penalties. That's just what they do. But they get a lot of their goals on penalties, and that they're just, they don't do a lot in open play. So I like getting the draw no bet here with Atlanta at plus money, who I think is the better team talent wise. I don't think DC United has been tested. We talked about their cake schedule to start the season when it was what Charlotte at FC Cincinnati and they won. Yep. Then they saw Chicago and they got shut out. Then they saw Toronto, who also is not a great team and lost to Toronto on the road. So I like getting plus money here at Atlanta. And if, if Atlanta doesn't show up and they end up – I think I think they draw it worse. I can't see Atlanta losing to this D.C. United team. Then I've got push protection, and I'm, I'm fine with that. So plus 140, give it to me. Yeah, I was on. I was honestly a little surprised to see you not on the draw here. I, I felt like your draw senses might have been tingling. But uh, if you feel like that's a worst-case scenario, I definitely see where you're coming from. Uh, what what is our health status for 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 some of those big name Atlanta guys that have been out? Uh, so we're, it's not just injuries. We're also coming out of the international break, right? And yeah. that we had, I think, seventy seven MLS players playing on or at least called up to different countries over this break. International break is always a tricky spot. There's always this hangover when teams get back. Um, you usually see less goals uh, just on average in that initial weekend back or, or slate back from international break. Um, so I'll just include it all here. So Araujo is still out. Um, he got injured, you know, in the first game, like 20 minutes in, they said he'd miss about a month. So we're coming up on that timeline now, uh, but I don't expect him to see you there tomorrow. Um, Robinson, he's in the starting lineup for the U S tonight. He's played a lot of minutes over this break. I don't know if he gets uh, a start on Saturday, or if they just decide to rest him since he has been playing nonstop pretty much. Um, Sosa is, is, is touch and go. There, there's other key pieces that are just not fully fit. What I do like is they are integrating uh, Almeida more and more. Yeah, He played 30-something minutes two games ago. He played the entire second half last game. 
Um, I think Pineda, the coach, has to find a way to get him into the starting lineup. Um, I'm not even sold it was all a fitness issue. I think he's literally just trying to figure out how best to use this talented kid he's got. Yeah. So uh, so I would love to see him start, but he's definitely going to play and see minutes, and they are exceptionally better when he's out there. Um, he can, even if it's just letting him just float around and just, just be out there and run and, and find space and create chances, he's talented enough to just do that on his own without being set up in, in, in a winning system, so to speak. So um, they are still going to miss some guys, but they're getting, they are slowly getting healthier. And and I think Almeida, once he gets fully integrated, is going to solve a bunch of issues offensively for this team from a creative standpoint. Oh, 100 percent, man. And, and we're, we're all we're all really excited to see what that looks like when Almeida and, and Martinez kind of get their chemistry straight and figure that out. So, um, yeah, definitely. I, I was also shocked to see this at this price. So for this price, I, I'm I. I'm definitely on board with you here. Love it. Hit me up. What do you got? Yeah. So uh, first play for me, uh, this is a total hammer spot for me. I'm really excited about this one. Um, Cincinnati and Montreal. I'm just going to eat the juice on this one and take the over two and a half here. Honestly, I think this could cash first half. Like I really, really, really am excited about this play. Um, Cincinnati, believe it or not, is um, second in expected goals and in big chances created this year in Major League Soccer. They're also first in big chances missed. So, like, you know, that should be noted as well. But these guys are creating. They've scored goals at home for the last two seasons against almost everybody. So, like, these guys are comfortable playing their game at home. They're going to score goals at home. Um, And then, of course, they're still just atrocious defensively. So they're still number three in expected goals conceded um, meaning at the bottom of the list in, in major league soccer. So still very bad defensively. Um, and I like this spot for Montreal to score goals. I, I mean, I almost looked at, I might sprinkle Montreal to score in the first half, maybe even a, a team total look over one and a half, because I think this could be a goal festival. Um, and I like this spot for Montreal for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, they battled really hard in, in Champions League and, and and it was and I really enjoyed watching them because they kind of over overperformed and they represented Major League Soccer well. They just got knocked out by Cruz Azul. Um, you know, that's that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's a really good, good club in Mexico. They played them really tight. I think they lost like one to two on aggregate, but they're done with that now. So first game out of Champions League, what do they do? They go on the road to the Benz, to Atlanta United, one of the toughest places to play, and they put up three goals on the road. These guys got after it, man. Um, And I know Atlanta's banged up, but still, that's not an easy place to play. You're on the road. You're hard-pressed to score three goals on the road anywhere in Major League Soccer. So I like what these guys have. I I like their style of play on the counter. I like these guys going forward with with, uh, Kyoto and Mihailovic and then uh, the youngster, uh, Ishmael uh, Konye. Uh, that kid's got size. He's got speed. He's explosive. I honestly love their attack. Um, maybe not against, you know, the Sounders or, or the union. Would I be backing them? Would, would I, you know, I probably wouldn't be backing it over here, but against Cincinnati, I, I totally think that these guys get on, get on the board a couple of times. Um, and I expect Cincinnati to score. So I think this one could be fun right from, from the opening kickoff. And I, I think we see three or four goals here. A hammer spot, huh? Yeah. I'm going to have to just, to just back you on this one. Um, I, so I, I, I'll be honest because of international break, I just steered clear of all the Canadian teams because so much of their personnel play on team Canada. And, um, and they, they did some, they did some okay rotation. I haven't checked their lineup for tonight, so I don't know who's in and who's out, but I, I just steered clear. So I saw this and didn't even really dive into it. Um, I do know that Cincinnati lost uh, Matarita, uh, to an ankle injury, and yeah. in two games, that left back had a goal and two assists, and was yeah. one of their best players on the field. Um, yeah. He's out, I think, three months. They did surgery, all this stuff. That does concern me just long term for Cincinnati's uh, creativity. But they they still have arguably one of the best tens in the in the league in Acosta. Yeah. I mean that that dude is leading the league in key passes per match, um, and he, he does, man. He he is pulling all the strings out there in that 11. Uh, and so all of the, even though he's only got one assist, it all starts and ends with Acosta and what he's 
doing to create there from midfield into the final third. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the Montreal game with Atlanta was wild, man. Like, you'd be hard-pressed to say Montreal gave it away. They gave away three points. Um, they had it. And that <laughs> that goal they give up to, to draw 3-3, three, three, I yeah, I don't have any really way to excuse that goal. Uh, you yeah. saw their defense literally getting into their keeper as soon as it went in. Like, they, <laughs> they jumped on him. <laughs> so, right. uh, so, yeah, no, I do like this. I, I'd be interested to see how they line up just because I don't know what these Canadian teams, Montreal, Toronto, what they're going to do uh, for their 11, considering how many guys they had off on the national team. Yeah. Um, but but I do think this is a really good spot. I like it. Right on. What do you got for us? So let me jump over to my next one, flip my page. So I, I have a not fun play. I'm attacking San Jose again okay. with an under three um, as they're hosting Austin FC. Uh, San Jose is just at the very bottom in, in big chances created and conversions. They just Their offense doesn't have any kind of rhythm, um, any kind of tune. And so – uh, I, I don't think that they're going to do much here. Uh, I think that w- I think the last two games they've uh, been clean sheeted both games. I think they're both on the road, but still just nothing from them. Um, and until I see otherwise, Austin FC is a great home team to back and a great away team to fade. Like, I don't know what else to do with them because it is night and day since they've come into the league. So they're just going to have to show it to me otherwise. Um And like I said, international break spots usually lead to less goals, more unders. San Jose, I think, had five guys away on international duty. Um, Um, Austin FC, I guess it still struggles to create on the road for whatever reason. It almost feels like it's just a mental hurdle now. Um, Yeah. And so, so yeah, no, at under getting getting the hard three, even with the juice, I'm okay with it because I don't see how this goes over four goals. Yeah, I think I think that's an important spot to uh, to just pay the juice for the three because. You think maybe even even if this one gets out of hand, maybe it's two one. Uh, you know, either way, I don't necessarily wouldn't trust San Jose to score two even at home. You know, uh, the way the, the way they've looked, um, and then like you said, Austin looks good at home when, when they're playing behind the crowd and the and the environment, and everything, and then on the road they just haven't been the same team yet. As an Austin fan, I can, I'd like to see him break out on the road, but um, as a as an MLS hits host, I would love this game to be zero zero. So. Um, I think it's uh, definitely important that that you would want to pay the juice and get three instead of the two point seven five or wherever it's at. Yeah, I mean, and if you watch the show regularly, we don't eat a lot of juice. That's just There's not what, that's just not what we do. So when we take it, it's for spots like this where like we just want that extra protection just in case things go haywire. Absolutely. Um, so hit me up with your next one. Yeah. So second play for me, um, I like this play a lot too. I don't know if I call it a hammer spot, but I really like it. I'm going to play it officially. Um, I'm going to back the Philadelphia Union money line uh, plus the under four and a half goals on the combo market there. Um, so Charlotte, uh, the Queen City Club, um, back-to-back wins last two weeks at home. Uh, Coach Miguel Angel Ramirez has these boys at least organized for the most part. Um, but I want to look at some stats here and some analytics and some 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 key reasons for why I'm fading them in this spot. Number one, um, they beat New England three to one at home. New England was fresh off the Champions League loss. I mean, that was like a textbook letdown spot. Just, I mean, it, it was a perfect. I, I didn't have the nuts to back Charlotte there, but that was a perfect letdown spot to back Charlotte if you were sharp enough to hit that and if you were brave enough. So, props to anybody that did that. Um, and then they beat Cincinnati two to one, or uh, sorry, two two to zero at home last week. I, I I didn't. I think Cincinnati had like four big missed chances. They created four big chances, and they missed all four. That game was uh, in Charlotte. Um. So, and then, like I said, they appear to be organized defensively. You and I have talked about that, but you know who's tied for first and expected goals conceded in Major League Soccer this year? It's Charlotte. They're yeah. tied. They're tied with San Jose and, Fan- and Vancouver for basically the worst defensive unit when it comes to expected goals conceded. So, um, you know, and, and then they're and then they're just not that prolific moving forward. I mean, they, they've got the Polish guy that's named, you know, it's they have a guy named Carol that, that scores some goals for them. But 
Um, the best player on their team is a college kid. He is their—he's their, he, he's their first draft pick, Bender. Oh, that's Bender, the, yeah, he's got, that's the—that's the best guy on their team, and that's a problem. He's—he's he's like leading the league in assists this year, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. That's a problem. They're just—they're just not prolific moving forward. So now they—they they, they go on the road, you know, against the class of the league so far this year, the Philadelphia Union. Um, Philadelphia Union is good for a goal or two at home. You know, these guys are the kings of winning one to zero at home, two to zero at home and making it look like a dominant performance because it is a dominant performance. Um, they're number two in the league and expected goals conceded and number two in goals conceded. Um, they've only allowed two big chances the entire season. They've only allowed two big chances. So that tells you how solid they are defensively. Their top four players. I looked at the, the, at the foot mob uh, ratings earlier today. Um, well, first of all, uh, Philadelphia is the number one team on that foot mob analytic oh, yeah. rating scale. Um, number two, their top four players are their right back, uh, their left back, Wagner, their center back, Jacob Glesnes, and then their goalkeeper, Andre Blake. So these guys are built from the back. They, you know, they never, I don't see Charlotte getting the better of them, you know, rattling them. I think this is going to be a comfortable. 2-0 type home win. So I'm going to play the money line plus the under four and a half. Uh, so let me start with that. I think it's insane that you can add under four and a half to this. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like that's just, that's an insane total for any Philadelphia game. Yeah. Like period. I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, so I, I love that you're able to get as high as four and a half because that means Philly can win three, one and you still cash. And that, that, that boggles my mind that you're able to get it at 120. So I do love this play. Um, yeah, I, I, to, to go back to what a lot of you said, Charlotte, I expect them to have a high expected goal conceded uh, concession rate because they're an expansion side. Like they're not supposed to be good. That's what was that's what was the surprise to start this season was how organized they are. Yeah. And that goes straight back to coaching. So props to the coach because that team is looking way better than I think they actually are. They still are void of talent. I don't think that's even in question. But if you can get 11 guys moving as a unit, you can cover up a lot of your individual mistakes. Yeah. Um, so so I do I do like this spot. I, I think, yeah, I don't I don't know if Charlotte scores. So I, I love that you can cover anywhere from Philadelphia 4 to 0 to 1 0. In all cash, this is this is a great play. All right, let's go. What, what do you got for us next? So I'm going to go to my favorite play of the weekend, which is the Sunday game. It's the only game on Sunday. It's the Portland Timbers hosting the LA Galaxy. There are always fireworks when these two teams meet up. Just always. So I'm going to hit both teams to score plus over two and a half at minus 110. Um, I'm only keeping it to a unit because of the international break hangover, and I just don't want any – any ridiculousness. So one unit that way, in case the worst case scenario happens, I'm, I'm not hemorrhaging. Um, Portland's keeper is the worst player on their team. I, I, I said at the beginning of the season, I, I did not like their keeper. Steve Clark, their former keeper is now in Houston and Clark wasn't like amazing, but he was dependable and reliable. Um, this guy, like I said, I think he's the worst player in the starting 11. Wow. Um, so you're giving me a bad keeper. The Galaxy had some um, people on international break. Uh, Portland had their best center back on an international break for New Zealand. Um, props to him. He's, he had a brace today in that New Zealand match. So what? <laughs> good, good stuff. Who did they play um, Fiji? Uh, Solomon Islands. Oh, okay. All right. All yeah. Right. So they're, <laughs> they'll probably end up playing Costa Rica in that World Cup playoff match. I would love to see the Kiwis in the World Cup. but anyway. I hope they, Yeah, I hope they win. Um, so – both these teams right now, their expected goals on the road, Galaxy, are 2.2. When the Portland's at home, their expected goal total is 1.96. You mean so we combined? Could look, do what? You mean you mean combined, like for the full game? Galaxy, when they're on the road, they have two, they've had two road games. Uh -huh. Their average expected goal total for those two games was 2.2 goals. Sheesh, wow. Portland, same thing. When they're at home, their average expected goal total is 1.96. So I think this is a game where you could see the expected goal total get up to four, if not more. Wow. And so to get that kind of opportunity and chances at this price, I couldn't pass it up. I, I, I really like this spot a lot. 
Yeah, I like it a lot more after after hearing uh, some of those numbers you talked about. I will say all the international break players that these two teams had were all on defense. Um, at Galaxy's guys didn't get a lot of run. Uh, Tuiloma for Portland did get a ton of run. Okay. Um, so we'll see if he's in on Saturday. I say all that, though, because if any of these defensive guys aren't in because of international break, I just like this even more. So because these are all starting defensive players that that went off on break. Yeah, um, I know. I know we, we've both got some uh, some we, we both want to get going and watch the United States game. But I want to ask you about uh, Mr. Costa, Mr. Douglas Costa. I know he scored a goal. Um, I know you're not so high on him. Have you watched him play this year? And and, and is he how does he look? I mean, is, is he better than you thought or, or no? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> and here's why I say, because it's still evident that if that his talent is way better than the most of the guys he's going up against. Okay. Costa's problem has always been he does not care at times. And you can see it when he's out there. At times, he's he's a hundred percent engaged, and at other times, he is totally clocked out. Yes. And that's always been the issue, though. So if he if he plays a hundred percent, he's fantastic. It's just you can't rely on him. But he's going to have moments this season. He already has. He's going to have moments where he looks good, and you're going to be like, "That's the Costa I know." But at, at this point, I think he is what I think he is who he is. Um, Right. So this is all about really Chicharito, who has, I think, on the season five, uh, big misses already. Uh -huh. Like so, he's getting the service, he's getting the ball, and normally in those situations, Chicharito scores. He's automatic, so, yeah. So I, I expect some positive regression coming from him personally, uh, if not here, then soon. So yeah, I, th I think uh, I've got another play on this game at with my betwithus.com uh, article up. I've also got to play on your Philadelphia game, so that's why I'm high on, on, uh, on, on where you're at with that. So yeah, check out check out the website. You get two more plays of the BetWithUs.com um, article. Please again like, subscribe, hit the button. Let's recap for everyone real quick the picks. All right. So I've got uh, three. I'm going to be on Atlanta draw no bet at plus one forty. I'm going to go to San Jose and take the under three and just eating the juice there. And then I've got Portland, both teams to score, plus over two and a half at minus 110. Yeah, I'm rolling with uh, the two plays for me today. Um, that first one I talked about, Cincinnati and uh, CF Montreal, the over two and a half. I'm eating the juice, uh, minus 137. If your book only has the 2.75, I think it's for like minus 110 range, that's fine. Play it. I mean, I really think this game could get to four, so I'm fine with that. Second play and last play for me, Philadelphia Union money line plus the under four and a half. Let's have a big week. Going to try to keep it rolling. I think the show plays for me went 3-0 and oh last week, 4-1 uh, and one total with the article. So Cooper's bringing the heat this week. I feel it. It's going to be a good one. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back after a break. Best of luck on whatever you're on this weekend, and we'll catch you next time.